Hello everyone, I'm Adi Oladupo and welcome back to the Men's Room Podcast. Joined as always by my good friend Rory Jennings. Today we're talking crime and gang culture. A very, very sensitive topic and we're joined by none other than Gideon Barbang. Did I say uh, that correct? Did yeah, I get did, it right? yeah, Barbang, yeah. Barbang, yeah. 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 Um, I'm going to give Gideon his proper title. Founder of Our Pain to Power, Chairman of the Violent Crime Prevention Youth Board, award-winning motivational speaker and representative of the Prince's Trust uh, Advisory Board as well. So you do a lot. Yes. You do a lot and I think it's needed when it comes to crime and gang culture. Uh, talk to me, go back a few years. Yeah. Um, obviously you are what you are now and it's a very positive role model, positive in terms of what you do. Yeah. Was it always that? No, I feel like inside it probably was. Mm. But you know, when you're raised in an environment um, with 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 low mental health, with high poverty, high anxiety, underserved community, mm. um, those traits that you have that my mum and my dad installed in me um, starts to kind of go, and then you have to pick up other traits to survive in that environment. What area are you from in London? So, South London, uh, Croydon. Mm. So, a little area in between Croydon and Mitcham. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What was growing up for you like? And when I say that, I mean like gangs and crime. What was that like for yourself? So, for me, I didn't see it as gangs. Mm. You saw it as your friends. Um, these are friends that you've known for a long time you know their parents is like a community yeah um and i made friends that obviously had issues at home so some some you know had parents that were in jail um siblings that were selling drugs and i think what happened was when i became their friends i started to see things and hear things which starts to impact me as well. So now if you're standing, if you're with your friends riding a bicycle and he has a brother who has an issue with someone else and you're with them, you're now part of the situation. You've now got that issue. You, you now have that issue. Yeah. And I feel like that's what happened with me. Cause I didn't need to join a, a gang. I didn't, and, and, a, and you know, it didn't, I didn't know it was a gang, but I didn't need to join anything like that because some most people sometimes join for, um, finances but I was fine my parents took um, great care of me but for me I think with just the sense of belonging mm. uh, I, I'm an only child so I took my friends you know I took them as my family mm. and my friends I'm talking about the gang mm. when when did it go into because so far hearing it described it sounds yeah. it sounds pretty relatable yeah whereas I think you're I think most people who grew up particularly in central London in flats across London will certainly empathise with what you've said so far. Yeah. Growing up with your mates, if your mate's friend has a problem or, or your mate's brother has a problem, that problem becomes yours. I think this is all very relatable. Mm, exactly. But I think that it's going to become a little bit... Like, so far, I'm on board. Yes. But I know that our experiences change massively. When yes. did it go from relatable, mm -hmm. growing up, having your friends in the estate, your friends yep. in the, in yep. the area to becoming more actual gang rather than friends. Right. Um, so for me, it's when I, I a few reasons is, is complex because again, I had my friends that would have issues, but then I didn't see no role models that I can look up to. Now, the only ones I saw were the ones that were driving the big cars and the chains and they were the drug dealers and the gangsters. So, I'm looking at these people thinking, yeah, I want to be like them. So mm. then you start to do... So it's the elders and it's the elders in the area and that becomes aspirational. Yes. They've got the money, they've got the girls, they've got the car, they've yes. got whatever else. Yes. And that becomes the aspiration. Yes. Yeah, exactly that. So I saw that, um, plus having issues here and there with, you know, you find out that your area has issues with another area and again, automatically you're involved, your friends are involved. That to me is when it becomes, up until this point, I think your London story and my London story is similar. Mm -hmm. Now it's about to turn, I think, because I never, you know, how this seemed, maybe I'm a bit old for this, but you know what seemed to materialize post-Code Wars? Yes. That kind of thing. 
that never entered my life at all when I was young. I was from Northwest London, Kilburn. That never, post Cold War, that kind of thing wasn't on my radar at all. It's funny it's, that you say that because for me growing up, and it's funny, I've got friends like Rory that it completely missed them. Like yeah. they, I say this stuff to them and they, they, well, we live five minutes away from each other. I'm like, yeah, but it's hard how it doesn't affect you. For me, that was just a standard. For me, obviously I'm in Stratford. Right. So my, my problem growing up was always with Hackney. Yes. And it mattered. It mattered. Big, big time. Right. Yeah, See, so but if, if you were from Kentish Town or Camden Town or Kill, it didn't matter to me. Like, if I'm in matter. Hackney, I'm on alert. Growing up, right. between the ages of 18 to, go younger, 16 to 30. If I'm in Hackney, I'm thinking at any time there could be a problem. And is that relatable to you? When you hear that, is that the way that you see it as well? Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely. It, 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 you know, every time I stepped out my house, hoodie on. Yeah. It, it wasn't to look cool. It was for protection and fear. Because I don't know who's going to see me. I, I've, I've had issues. Sorry, when I've seen my enemies outside my house walk past outside my house, and then they've come to knock on my door asking my mum for me, wanting to attack me. My mum said. Oh no, he's he's not in. But she didn't even know. He said, "Yeah, I'm his friend." But I've been having beef with um, the guy for about two years now, and it was at his peak. So, yeah, I can definitely relate to that. It wasn't a joke. Do you, do, you, do you was there a time for you growing up? So you meeting your friends, and like Rory said, initially it's fun, right? Yeah, and they're not even we're not even thinking it's you're in a gang, it's just with no. your friends. You're with yeah. your friends, and you're yeah. going out or whatever. Yeah. There is a time though where it does cross and you know uh, this has got to a stage where yes. it's become naughty. Yes. Is there not a, like you grew up with mum and dad around. Yes. Yeah. Is yeah, there not yeah. a time where you think, I'm not a bad boy though, deep down inside, I, I, can, mm. I know wrong from right. Yeah. Let's stop this. Yes. Why so, didn't you stop? Right, so there'll be times when my friends wanted to like rob shops and rob people and I never did that. I just couldn't, mm. my heart just yeah, never yeah, let yeah. me ever. Um, so I told him not. Like, come on, come on. We're not doing that. Do you know what I mean? But then the thing with that is I couldn't keep doing that because they'd be like, oh, "You're not on it," and then I won't have no friends. Mm. So what age are you here? What, what age are we? So talking? let's say we're we're talking from we're talking from thirteen mm. to about sixteen, seventeen. Okay, yeah, yeah. And you know when that situation would actually manifest itself, so it's happening. So yeah. if you're you're with your friends. Again, this is the sort of situation that I can empathise with you with your mates. Yeah, your mates see somebody who's yeah. got something that looks appealing to them. Yeah, they decide to make a move. Yeah, in that situation, at that young tender age, say yeah. fourteen years old. Yeah, do you go along with it? In just in terms of that that moment, or even at that age, were you aware that this was incorrect and tried well, to put a stop so to it? So it depends on how far it was. So if it was like, if I had a chance to, because sometimes it depends on how I'm feeling as well. Yeah. Sometimes I might want to join in for some reason. I'm not sure. But the most of the time I would, I would, if I, if I'm able to tell them, oh, come on guy, mm. come on, he's, come on, what are we going to do with this? Come on, I'd probably, probably make a big scene out of it yeah. with, 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 um, with, with a few, try to make it a bit funny. Mm. And then with that, I'll say, come on guys, we're not going to do that. And we're like, oh yeah, you're right. And then yeah, yeah. we'll just kind of leave it. And do you know what's, what I find like interesting is trying to, trying to um, understand the motivation. Yeah. You touched on it earlier, but, it sounds like you had like a supportive family. I did, mum and yeah. So was it financial gain? Like, do you know when people get into these situations, yeah. like if you were to say like gang culture, why is it for monetary gain? Is that the point? It's so complex because everyone has their own reasons for being caught up in it. Some people, again, finances, um, wanting to be a part of something. Yeah, feeling a belonging part. Feel, yeah, um, I understand. Feeling yeah. like, you know, low self-esteem. I feel like everyone, we all had slow self-esteem and we had to join to make ourselves feel better. Um, and just the clout, you know, walking, I used to walk down the road in Mitchum and Croydon. Oh, hi, Gideon. That makes yeah, you feel yeah. like you're a top man. Yeah, status. You know what I mean? Status, status yeah, yeah, exactly that. And look, me and Gideon, obviously... Look, I guess we share something similar because we're both from African backgrounds. So yeah. I already know that his mum and dad would have been super strict. Yes. And my mum and dad at the time when my dad was around super strict. So it was almost a case of when you stepped outside the house, it was almost like, 
<sighs> let's go. Exactly. Because yeah. in the house, you couldn't do anything. Like, no chance. Like, you no. know, the belt, so they, would come, so the belt would come out immediately. So your family would have been livid to know livid. that you were having your moments. And Addy, you've had your moments. Your family would have also been livid. Yeah, yeah if, I think if my mum, like if, <laughs> it's funny, but if my mum was to have been told that what her son was doing outside, she would never believe it. Because inside, I yeah. am the perfect. My, my dad was a pastor. My mum was part of the church brigade. So it was almost impossible. So I always used to laugh with my friends that like, none of our parents would ever yeah. believe what we're doing outside. But like Gideon said, for me growing up, the, the, the guys to look up to, there wasn't the role models now that you see with young black boys growing up. Now they're seeing artists and yeah, yeah, yeah. actors and musicians. Everyone's yeah. doing good. It was the guy on the road selling food or doing fraud at the BMW, the big gold chain. And you're like, I need some of that. Yeah. How do mm. I get that? And so you're just following him. And I used to follow my older brother as well. And then eventually you're, you're, you're in a gang, but it's not even a gang. You don't even feel like you're in a gang, but you're in a gang. I think for where it turned with me is that when my best friend died, got killed. Right. And then in, I was, in this it, in this gang in in as part of as part of yeah of Jesus right yeah very good friend of mine Olu passed away when I was twenty five so then it's like okay this is this has now become very very serious like we this isn't a case of just making money people are dying yeah and people are going to jail and as much as I've considered myself a, a so called bad boy but I was smarter than going to jail so I was like okay I'm not doing that you guys have gone that I'm not doing that and that's why I was able to kind of go that way where other friends, and I don't know if Gideon said, other friends went vroom, mm. and they were dead or in jail because mm. of that. I was able to kind Did of- Did you like, have okay, that no. epiphany? Did you have that moment? You know how Addy found himself at a crossroads, uh, like a, a hurtful, pained crossroads, but still, did you have a, a did. moment? I did, I was 16, and um, the, head, the head of my school called my mum in and said, your son is, you know, up to stuff. And she knew, because every year I got excluded and I, I got like banned from schools and she had to pick me up for like a whole year because I wasn't allowed outside the, of the gates after school, whatever. So she knew what was happening. So and what, you weren't allowed within the vicinity so of the So after school I had to be um, picked up. Because yeah, they knew it was trouble outside yeah, after school. Yeah, because yeah. they're like, yeah, Gideon starts trouble Gosh. with his friends. So, so that can be, I didn't even know that could be enforced. You could, yeah. There, there yeah. could be a thing from the school where they say, yeah, you they must picked have me up yeah. for, a six, for six months. It was, yeah, and right. it was so embarrassing. Mm. But yeah, every day she was parked right in the middle so everyone could see, <laughs> pick me up for, the, for six months. <laughs> and what, what, what then happened? What was the moment that... So, um, she, so she broke down in tears um, when we had the meeting mm. with the head teacher. And it, yeah, she just, when he told her, you know, your son's a gangster, like he's, he's doing this and that and he's in school with his hoodie up, his trousers low. And she just broke it down and I just thought, ah, oh. but again, I feel like I was at that age when I knew things were just becoming too much on the roads as well. Mm. I think I had a fight a few months like we got caught with a BB um, thing as well, gun. Mm. So things, there was a, there was a knife at a, a fight scene. So things were at, at yeah. its peak. And I thought, yes, after seeing her cry, I thought, no, I have to try and make a change and obviously it was the right time as well because I'm choosing my next options college mm. um, or work sixth form and um, I chose to go to sixth form mm. because you know I knew that it was the smart boys there and I wouldn't have no issues even though I still kind of did but it was the right choice and all my friends were there yeah, they went somewhere else college and that stuff and the friends that did one of them still in jail for murder, one of them shot themselves with a um, with a shotty, I think, a mm. shotgun. One of them was in, few of them was in jail, robbery, this and that. So I knew that if I, I just knew, like deep down in my heart, if I had went that way, it would have got worse because again, we're 16, we're gonna be 17, it's just gonna get, so I knew that now, nah, Gideon, just try and divert. So that was the point where I started to divert and you know, I started to be around more of the right people. Mm. In a sense. Did it cause issues? With, did, so effectively, did you have to leave people behind? So we, I still lived in the same area, but yes, I did. And I had a friend, like a best friend, who, like, he he was like he was so cool with me, but then he was the worst as well. He was the reason for about eighty percent of my issues right. because he was just a snake, basically. Mm. And and I don't know why, but no, no, I understand why now because he had a lot of issues at home and stuff like that but he was like I felt like one time he would love me in the 
the next time he'll hate me. And I was dealing with that for like four or five years of school. And it, I was happy to just move away from him as well. Right. Even though he lived down my road and I still saw him after. But yeah, I didn't, I left some people behind, yeah, definitely. But again, I was in a new space without, you know, because the, the school I went to was just like a lot of guys, part of that life. You but know there wasn't I mean? any pushback from, from the fellas that you left behind. They weren't. No. They weren't kind of begrudging of you trying to move on or no. trying to keep you in. Fun. No, because no, there wasn't. No, okay. no. That's interesting you said it because for me it was difficult because I felt like I'd gone so deep into yeah it. It was almost like I couldn't send everyone a text message to say I'm, I'm no longer in it. Yeah, it was. Di- you know what I mean? It's like yeah. how do I tell people? Okay, I'm now working. I remember I got my job at Isn't in Council. And I was like, I, I, I'm working. Yeah, I'm no longer a part of this. So I had still had trouble for the next two, three years after. Still putting out fires here and there, still and still with friends as so well. So I still had trouble. Yeah. I still had issues when that, but I know that deep down, I didn't really tell anyone I've went there because I'm trying to move away, mm. but I knew deep down. So I still had issues for the first, um, about a year after I had issues in sixth form, outside of sixth form. Mm. Yeah, because you can't just change like that, right? Mm-hmm. So, but I knew that I was making steps, even if it was baby steps, I'm, I was making steps away from that. And that's what... You know, you know with this postcode war, thing, yeah, because it's now become... You know, everyone likes to say, oh, in my day, it wasn't that bad, but it probably mm-hmm. was. Yeah. But we had no social media because it, now see, it flares over. I everyone genuinely don't it. think it was, though. It was, it was frightening, I thought. I don't think it was Because I thought people bad. were... Oh, yeah, 100% it was. But, but, there's, but the epidemic of children dying on the street wasn't like that when I, we I were kids, I feel like mate. the children are getting... Children were killed then, but you just didn't know about it as you much. You think so? No. Your children. Man. It's bad now. I think everyone's gone crazy now. Yeah. Even the music culture is gone crazy now. The young bucks now are like they were when... I, look, I, in my opinion, they're not, man. When... The young kids now are mad. They're mad. They're, 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 they're completely mad. Do you, right think now, it, do you think it's comparable to when we were young? I, I don't know. Sometimes I think of how... I only can think of myself in clubs and the people that are getting guns and knives into clubs. That's club stuff, but now we're mm. seeing it on our streets, broad daylight, yeah. on buses, acid attacks. We're seeing it everywhere, yeah. Yeah. every day. There's that, no that, like... that terrified, that was a terrifying era. Do you remember when that became... Well, the acid the attacks. We- the, yeah. yeah, that's crazy, yeah. Because it looks like water, so you just don't even know, do you? People could just roll down your window. That's crazy. Why do you think, and this is probably even something in history, but this yeah. postcode war thing, mm-hmm. I, I remember, because I had friends in Hackney. So yeah. I was thinking, well, I'm not, I don't hate everyone in Hackney because yeah, my exactly. friends are, yeah, a lot yeah. of my friends are in Hackney. Why has it gone so crazy now? Like before it was an area to an area. So it was Brixton Lewisham, for example, or Brixton yeah. Peckham. Yes. Now it's postcodes within Peckham. Yes. And I don't understand. Now what happens is issues. People start issues. So for whatever reason, something's happened with one individual mm. of probably something little, but then someone has just taken it far and then they have to take it far then tit for tat. Literally, that's that's how it all starts. It's always over something little. All it took was just, you know what? I'm sorry, bro. Let's sort this out. All right, then, cool. But it just just never too much ego, too much ego and pride. Because mm. now there's not even, now it's actually um, Brixton versus Brixton, mm. Croydon versus Croydon. Mm. There's no postcodes really no more. Just whoever, whoever. There's, there's like five sets in Brixton that all have issues with each other. Do, do you think, and I guess I can ask this, I guess as, as a black person, but... Yeah. Obviously, look, whites will fight whites, and you know you go up to north, and Asians are fighting Asians. Yeah. But there, there seems to be, I think, anyway, a bigger epidemic with black on black crime. Do, do you believe that, or do you think it's just highlighted more by the police and, and other organisations? Because me growing up, my fear was against my own. Yeah, I never had any drama. But that's with... because we're in our own. Yeah. Environment, you know mm. what I mean? So we're it's just us there most of the third time. We still had issues with the Asians mm. and, and, and yeah. We we, we, we we and and some um white young people as well when I was younger. So I don't think if he's your enemy, then he's mm. your enemy, it doesn't really matter what he looks like. Mm. Um, yeah, I f- again I feel like you'll find probably like Manchester or Liverpool or, you know, the different areas it might be more whites on whites or mm. more blacks on blacks or you know, it's just I think it just depends on the um, environment and the community. At what age would you say? How old are you now, Kidian? Um, Twenty-eight. You, you obviously you went you went to college sixteen, and it started to kind of obviously go away in terms of yes. you being involved with crime. Yes. Again. When yeah. would you say you officially closed the door on it? Probably after sixth form. So three years after I did three years in sixth form. So 
what made you then, because you've not just closed the door in terms of, okay, no more gang crime. You've completely gone the opposite way. Yes. By almost trying to, you know, you, obviously you're an author, you, 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 you do speeches on it. Why go that far? Why completely just say, okay. Oh, so before yeah. I did that, sorry. So when I was 18, I started to mentor my younger friends mm. naturally. Cause again, now I'm just like, yeah, this, this street life is not for no one and no one wins in it. So I just started to speak to my young people and just mental them as a big brother. Um, so I kept on that. And then um, when I went to, when I went to yeah. university, mm. um, again, I'm not involved in no gangs or anything like that. Um, I passed my first year of flying colors in my second year of university. That's when I get attacked. Mm. Um, so- I, Sorry, sorry, what, what, how, why, what happened? So, my family friend, again, had an issue. His friend had an issue with someone else. Yeah. Um, and then he was like, oh yeah, my mate's got an issue. Are you able to meet me? And he didn't really know what it was about. And I, I went in there blindly. But I, after I found out that there was issues throughout the whole day and I basically got the last end of the stick. Mm. Um, so what's happened is we went to meet them and then it was an ambush. Mm. And then we started to run, and the way I ran, um, they caught me by chance, and then they stabbed me. You got stabbed? Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. Where Fourteen about times. Fourteen. Yeah. yeah. So all over my body, fourteen times. Um, yeah, yeah. All over my yeah. Three three stab wounds were five inches deep, and one was literally an inch. The one yeah, an inch away from killing me. So then after that, that's when. That's when, but again, I wasn't involved in nothing. It was literally by chance, but I remember just being in the ambulance thinking. Some people would want retaliation. Yeah. Some people, that their first thing is, wait till I get back on my feet. And retaliate, yeah. Mm -hmm. How and have you been able to like, no, we're not gonna do that, why? Right, so how do you say that? So I think the next day I had phone calls upon phone calls, people from uh, my area, Croydon, my family members from all over like, what are we doing, Gideon, what are we doing, what are we doing? You know, people saying we've got the machines, we've got like what we're doing. And remember, I've left this life up. Some people are still in it, right? And Machines no, is a gun, by the way, when he says machine. Yeah. yeah. And I'm lying down on my bed. Number one, I haven't even recovered yet. I've just been stabbed like 12 hours ago. Let me relax. But secondly, I just knew that, no, because I knew that I'm still here. I'm still scared because I know some people, they'll probably die sometimes after being stabbed a few days after or a week mm. after. So I'm still kind of wary. But I thought, no, because... I was, I'm tired of it, like, I'm tired of the tit for tat, I'm tired of, who who wins? We attack them, we um, we might end up in jail or something like that, mm. or vice versa. So I thought, nah, we're gonna leave it. Oh, you sure, Gideon? Yeah, because no one wins, we'll be hurt, our family's gonna be hurt. Is it worth it? Is it worth, like, and then again, it will start a new war, mm -hmm. a new war in Leicester. Who knows what? Who knows how much people end up hurt or 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 you know dead mm. over me not saying. You know what, guys, leave it. So that's what I did. I said, we're leaving it. You sure? Yeah, we're leaving. Oh, okay. You know, wait until you're back in, in in the area, and then you know we can. I came back and I said, now we're not doing. Oh, you sure? Yep, we're leaving it. That's. That's mm, huge. incredible, like, to, to do that. I'll be honest, when my friend Olu died, yeah, and I had nothing to do with anything else, but my friend Olu died, I think six people died on both sides. Wow. Yeah, so six people. Now, death is different, though. I don't know what people would have done if I'd actually passed away, God mm. forbid, but I know death is, some. you know, when you're raised in a environment with trauma and, and you know, someone dies it's, and you're, just, you're full of hate, yeah. what do you do? Yeah. And I think for me, that was my scariest like time of my life. Yeah. Like, you know, like frightened, I'm not joking, like genuinely yeah. frightened. Yeah. I thought, okay, I can't even live where I live now because they people might know where I live. Yeah. I started going around and standing at people's houses until my big brother got involved. Um, and he was like, okay, enough, enough. Like, this all has to stop type thing. You have to either go to Nigeria or something has to happen. And that's when I go, okay, I'm gonna try and get a job. And But yeah, a lot of people, so for you to be stabbed that many times and for you to have that strength and say, 
no, enough's enough because it will be tit for tat forever. Mm. I think, it's far, I think it's you decide, far, yeah. It's a far braver reaction. 100%. As well. what, um, what are you seeing now? You know when you're out, you do some work with the Prince's Trust? Yeah. Are you seeing an understanding that this isn't the way to go? Are you seeing that people are... You know, this this message that people are trying to take out there, I feel like people are have really been trying to make young people realise that knives are not the way, gang yeah. culture is not the way. Is it worth Do you think it? the message is getting through? Is it worth it? A lot of people are doing it. I've got a close friend, yeah. Tony Bellew, who's like, you know, um, sort of gloves up in mm. terms of boxing, yes, knives yeah. down, things like that. Um, community centres are, are reopening. Yeah. There, there's not Do you remember when we centers. were kids, there was a knife, do you remember, did you get this? They just put a knife bank in the flats and it meant that you could go and throw it away and no, yeah. no, yeah, mm. no trouble. So these, these initiatives have been going, but are they working? Do you feel like it's changing? I feel like probably baby, yeah, some, some baby impact steps. is being um, done, I think, but overall, no, and I think because it just takes resources, it, it takes mentors in schools and mm. it takes funding you know, it takes funding, but no one, no one really cares until someone dies that's close to someone that has some sort of authority or the powers that be. Yeah, know? until it, until the blood kind of trickles down onto their doorstep. Yeah. Then I guess no one cares if it's sort of within, if you like the hood. Yeah. If it's confined within the hood and it doesn't get outside of the hood, then I guess it's just what's in the hood, isn't it? Yeah. I think once it goes on to the steps of the rich and the, the, the you know the well educated then maybe then maybe and now uh, I think in Leeds a twelve year old girl she got stabbed um, like five times as well a twelve year old girl yeah in either Leeds or Redden I'm mm. not sure and this was last year and it's scary now it's 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 all over it's not just London or young black boys it's everyone now. You know, it's affecting everyone. It's impacting everyone. Yeah, now. It's been big in Birmingham for years. Mm. Yeah, like Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. With the exactly. And the Birks, yeah. Manchester had it, didn't they? They were calling yeah. it Gunchester and all that. Yeah. Remember they had those yeah. serious yeah. gang issues. Not another called shot in them. Mm. Right? All these places, yeah. And it's been happening, but it's only now that they're like, "Oh gosh, let's do something." And it's a bit too late. But you know, I feel like we 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 all have a part to play in this. You know, schools, the community government the police see like we say you say those things and yeah th the one thing that you didn't say i feel like yeah. is the biggest thing yeah. parents mm. like you know parents we, we, yes. we say schools and police you're right and yeah the government Par yes parents, parents as well sorry yeah, I missed like, that my mum put the fear of god in me do you yes. know what i mean laid the law down and look to be f and i thank god she did because i, I easily could have gone the other yeah. way but it was my mum really that fear of her and the fear of even police knocking on the door or getting that letter from school. Yeah. She's the yeah. one that made me. And I feel like we don't blame the parents enough. Enough, you think. Maybe it's kids having kids, I don't know. I was gonna say, a lot of that, so when I'm working with uh, my mentees and stuff, it's, it's yeah, it's single mums, mm. single fathers, you know, broken homes. Yeah. And do we, can we really blame the parents for that? Yeah, I don't okay, think, yeah, yeah, yeah. That we, then stems back to like government, maybe. Yeah, that that as well, and you know, just choices. I guess people making choices and bringing young people, but you know, that's a whole different story. But um, yeah, with 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 the parents, I find it hard to blame because I don't know what happens in their home. You know, we we all have um, a duty, obviously, to care. For do young do you think people. the culture popularizes gangs? Like the, you know, films, music, mu music. I know, like there was a lot of talk about. And look, I I like the director. I actually know him personally from Blue Story. Okay, yeah. But I know that was banned from cinemas for a while because everyone yeah. thought that popularised the gang yeah, culture. Yeah, Whether yeah. or not that's true, I don't know. Yeah. But music, I think definitely does because it influences it. Right. Mm. When I was um, a teen, I was listening to the rap and that gigs and that, and yeah. it was influencing me. It was making me want to go on road and do something. Yeah. Now I know they say obviously it's the it's the lived experiences which is fine, mm. um, and obviously they didn't put, you know, they were all we were all raised in a certain environment, and that's so they're only what talking about what they know. Talking about what but they know, it still influences. It still influences, and I always say that okay, cool, but you're still not doing anything else than that, trying to support the young people. Mm. Do you it, know what I mean? It's education, isn't it? Education will 
alert people and make them capable of separating the art from the reality. Yeah. Like Eminem would always talk about that. Mm. Like, yeah. I'm not responsible for people shooting up their school. Yeah, I'm not responsible. Yeah. I talk about it, I sing about it, I make light of it. I maybe don't approach the situation in the way that you would like me to, but I'm not accountable here. I think, but should he though? Should, should he, he be, be accountable? Should people a, like that who have the poor, know. like, yeah, literally, they could, Eminem could tell people to jump and they'll all jump. Yeah. Should people like, if you go and Eminem's obviously old school, but new school with the to, Santan Daves and the Stormzy's and, and the, the, should they go to schools and colleges and unis? I know Stormzy I does a lot. He does with Stormzy people does into education. Yeah, Stormzy yeah, he does, does a lot. lot. He does. He does a lot. Yeah. Of, do they need to do more? Work. They do definitely, definitely. All of them, all of them. I don't want to say any names, but all of mm. them, all the drill rappers that are speaking about, you know, drugs and guns and knives, show us something that you're trying to do for the young people. That's going to help them. So, do you think you know when you asked rhetorically asked me the question, should they do that? Do yeah. you think that this this style of music and this approach to music is damaging. It is as much. I listen to it sometimes, but I'm, 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 you know, I'm not a kid anymore, so I can. You're understand not influenced it. anymore. I'm, I'm not influenced yeah, if you're anymore. Easily influenced, I guess. Then it'll, it'll, it's gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna, yeah. Like movies, like um, Scarface, Paid in Fools. When I, when, 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 when I watch that, for, oh, actually, I think I want to sell some mm. drugs. Actually, it just makes you think like that. Even if it's a joke, you have to feel like that. Now, paid what if food, paid, yeah. paid in Fools? Exactly, did, yeah. and then. Um, let's say what about Top have you seen Top Boy I've seen that as well that again not me but I'm sure when you're you know a little high watching it you're thinking oh gosh maybe I can start to sell drugs and then your mate says oh you know what I've got an order here he wants to drop me a bit of, mm. you know weed to go and sell you're like okay look, let's see how it goes and then it goes well keeps going well and then now you're in it mm. so you know just that thought can can start start the uh, the effect. Talk yeah. to me about your organization, Pain to Power. Yes. Um, so I started that. So I started that. I launched that last last year um, on April the thirtieth, which was when I was um, attacked fourteen times. And again, we try to do work right on the level, right on the ground level, uh, with early intervention. So I believe we need to be in schools from the age of like seven, yeah. um, making them aware of of the um, of knife crime and street crime and all of that stuff. Grand. So we do workshops around that. We do talks as well, and um, leadership skills as well because they need to understand that their leaders they don't have to be followers. Mm. Um, so again, we start low workshops, mentorship as well. Um, I believe in that highly. I believe in mentorship highly because just that one to one, that's someone that you can speak to. If I had a mentor, I would though if I had someone that I can speak to when I was in my um you know, fights and gang wars and stuff, he probably would have helped me, but I didn't have no one. People that I did have to speak to, my mentors were the ones that were in it as well. So mm. they were advising me to do the wrong things. But we didn't have someone that you can um relate to and speak to. Um there's there's nothing like that. So They've got to be relatable. Isn't it? Like, they gotta be relatable. They gotta understand. When I was in understand. Focus E15, like a homeless hostel, yeah, we had people come in suits, and it just looked at. It, I'm not. I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah. This is not gonna work for me. Yeah, if I had someone that looked like you coming in, yeah, relatable, that yeah. could tell me about. This is what it's gonna be like. You stabbed 14 times. Yeah. That then I'm stopping. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I, you know, as much as we all want to be so-called bad boys, yeah. you don't want to die. You don't want to die. You don't no. want to die. You no. don't want to get stabbed. No. So it's got to be relatable. So I think yeah. someone like you going in and telling your story. Yeah. That has to resonate with people. Yeah, and yeah. it does, and it does. Mm. It makes them think twice. Of course, it's not just the talk they need. They need um, the mentorship after because again, it's, it's once you're in it, it's so hard to leave. So yeah, we just I, I I just make sure that I'm I'm in there and and I'm speaking and they know that you know I'm authentic as well. I'm mm. I'm 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 not like blagging it or just saying like this is real life. These things happen. I've lost friends, people are dying. You see on the news every day. Don't be that person. You 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 don't have to be that person as well. There's so much to do now. You can make my money at the age of fourteen on TikTok or whatever. You know what I mean. So let's let's put something. Yeah, let's put a plan in place for you, and you know, let's set set um, some aims and and let's go. Do you still talk to people from your younger days? Yeah, I still live there. So yeah, yeah. yep, still still live there. You know, still walked outside my house last year. So 
two boys on a ped with like samurai swords trying to chase someone down. Yeah. So still, still, still. Was seen. it not Hyde Park? That big attack in Hyde Park. Mm. Yeah. Where people brought out samurai swords and yeah. someone brought out some, I don't know what it was, huge one. Yeah. Broad daylight. Yeah. Broad daylight yeah. chasing people around yeah. in, I think it was Hyde Park. Yeah. I think Trying that brought people. attention to it because everyone goes to Hyde Park. Yeah. Mm. So it wasn't like a park, like Victoria, it was, it was Hyde Park. Yeah, it was exactly. a big one. Mentally, how did getting stabbed 14 times affect you? Like, meant like, Physically, Ooh. you look obviously fantastic now, you're yeah. okay, but mentally, yeah. how did it affect you? Yeah, so um, I had PTSD and I still, you know, I'm still wary of my surroundings, mm. still panic a bit here and there. Um, but yeah, the effects, I feel like it probably kicked in like a year after, I think. Um, and yeah, just trust issues. Obviously, I wasn't able to sleep always wary of my of 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 who's around me mm. i wasn't able to like watch movies with like blood in it and all of that stuff i i had like nightmares for the whole year of like dogs chasing me in a graveyard and stuff um Jeez. so yeah 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 try to have some therapy and counseling but they were like booked up the only way i was able to see someone was when i told them i was suicidal even though i wasn't but i knew mm. that if i said that but even then when i went on the call they said no nah, you're fine so i did think they'd give you like how do you feel from one to ten or whatever yeah did a few speaking questions speaking therapy yeah and they said oh no you're fine you're right just, um how did your parents take it Ah, uh, so yeah devastated they were just happy that i survived um but yeah they were yeah they were scared obviously um, but grateful to God that you know I survived. Yeah. Rory, when you hear these stories, mm. obviously look, you've Rory grew up in an area, you know, and then he moved out of there. So you've grown up in an area where you've seen things. Mm -hmm. But when you hear stories like this, does it, does it shock you? Do you feel like my God, this is actually on my doorstep? I mean, it's shocking. Mm. It's certainly shocking, but it's not surprising. Mm. It's shocking because it should be a shocking story every time you hear something as as callous and, and hurtful as this. But mm. it's not a surprising story. Mm. I've, this is life in the city. And I think that begrudging acceptance that I've just displayed there is almost... Bad, isn't it? The, it's almost the worst thing that you could... Like, it should be, it should be totally unacceptable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think it's kind of seen as being part and parcel of living in the city. There is a violent tinge to our city. There is an undercurrent in the city. There is a gang culture in the city. And I think we've kind of all accepted that. Mm. And that is mm. probably the worst testament that you could give to London living, isn't it? Yeah, it, that's right, isn't it? Yeah. We, we kind of just that's, accept it. Which is scary, you're right, mm. which is actually, yeah. You saying that now, I'm thinking we have, but even me answering it, because I can't be, I can't be like, yeah, we're doing, I'm seeing people are dying. So it's like, yeah, it's 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 scary. It's it's scary. I can't. Sit I remember here. growing up in America was the place where it was violent. Yeah, like you heard gang culture in America mm. with the Bloods and Crips and other yeah. smaller gangs. And I remember reading, must have been a couple of years ago, that the knife crime in London had surpassed, or the killings in London that. had surpassed that in New, New York. York. Yeah, mm. and that's when you thought, okay, there's there's a problem. Yeah, we knew there was a problem anyway. But yeah. when you think it's passing, yeah, because especially a violent our age New group York, had, yeah. when we were growing up, New York was. Like you couldn't, you couldn't go on the subway. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden, London was comparable. Yeah. And even more, and even more. Mm. And it's getting worse. Those, those, those numbers yeah. are going up and up and up and up. Um, just as we wrap, Gideon, you, you yeah. know, like if you were now, look at you now, twenty-eight year old, talking yeah. about all these things in a positive light. Yeah. How, what would you advise yourself? Like, what would Gideon, this Gideon, tell fourteen-year-old Gideon who's starting to join gangs, who's Mum has to pick him up from school. What, what, what are you telling him? Well, do you listen, though? Um, <laughs> that's, that's the thing. So you know how difficult your job is then? Yeah, exactly. So you used to say that. Yeah. You know how difficult your yeah, job exactly, is. Absolutely. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Like, when you listen, you're smart. Be like, oh, please. Yeah. But there is a way. See, this is, I suppose this is the art of it. And I think that you're, you're obviously going to be very good at this because you're an excellent communicator and you, you're driven and passionate about what you do. But yeah. this, is the, this is the thing. How, how do you make somebody who is kind of belligerent because there is a belligerent age, mm -hmm. belligerent because of the way that they're approaching their life, how do you get into that person's psyche? How do you influence the uninfluenceable? It's an everyday thing. 
That's what I was saying. Mentorship. It's got to be, isn't it? See him, if I'm able to mm-hmm. see him like three, four times a week. Because mm. it works for me. Mm. But not just once a week or once every two weeks. Three, for like a whole year, two years. Mm. Minimum. That's when we're going to start to see some change because these young people are stuck in this environment that they can't leave. And every time they walk outside their house, they're seeing violence and crime. So I need to be matching the energy that the... Okay that the friends are matching, you know what I mean? Because he's on his friends, he's on the phone to his friends and they're smoking weed and that. I need to be with him as well. Not yeah. Mm. Yeah. Today, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I need to be with him as well, supporting him. You know what? Head up to London. Let's, um, and I don't know, let's play some, I don't know, football or something like that. Let's, let's just do something to engage and, 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 um, and push forward. That's what you said, I think, Ad, is important as well. I mean, you, you touched on the parental side of things. I think that's huge. But also the focus. Mm. You mentioned the Bellew initiative. Mm. Tony Bellew saying, get in a boxing ring, play football, be good. What are you good at? What, what yeah. do you want to do? Yeah. What's what's the ambition? But it's, it's opening the world, isn't it? You don't mm. have to do this because you could be a wicked actor. Dan Kaluuya's in Hollywood, mate. Like, Yeah, these are people they need to look at. You, yeah. Especially if we're talking from a, a black standpoint, they yeah. need to look at Raheem Sterling. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Raheem, 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 Raheem Sterling, Sterling out of Neesden. He's, but yeah. then again, how many of them make it through? Yeah. No, but that has to be the, that has to be the, the ambition, like it can be done. Yeah. It, it can Ch- be Chunks done. and them boys are all from the same estate. Yes. You know, yeah. just, yeah. just up there that. in Neesden. Yeah, it's true. But it's you're amazing. right though, it's, uh, it's an everyday job. I've got it's, like a couple of 16 year old nephews. Yeah. And my sisters reach out for, to me to talk to them. <laughs> what is it going? Yeah, well, it, they're at that age yeah, then when they're at crossroads. They, they're at crossroads. <laughs> yeah. And it's every day. And yeah. the but thing is, for you, I've man, you're so day. like, in my head, you're not. But you know, if you're them looking at you, yeah. it's like, who's this old geezer, man? Yeah, like, that's what they look at. You know what I mean? They, <laughs> they look at me like, no yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you don't know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And they're right. I don't know what's going on because no. I like, I might meet me in Stratford. Yeah. Like, I'm not coming to Stratford. Yeah. I'm like, nothing's in Stratford. Yeah. I don't see it anymore. Because yeah, exactly. I, I re- obviously, I yeah, don't see yeah. it. And I feel like I do see it because yeah. I'm in Stratford every day. But yeah. they're like, I ain't coming to Stratford. Yeah. I'll, I'll pick you up from the station. No, no, no. You got to come pick us up from where they are. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. So it's an everyday thing. Yeah. And people like yourself, Gideon, more power to you. Yeah, good luck. To yeah. tell your story, because um, it's, a, it's a scary, but also a magnificent story, the way you've come out of the other side. Yeah. And to keep on going. I think it's fantastic and these are the kind of podcasts I like to do because it's always good to hear someone that was a bit naughty Mm. who's now doing really good stuff as well. And they Just matter. like Rory. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be fooled by his posh accent. He was a bit naughty and now he's doing good stuff. He's doing good stuff Mate, as well. Thank you so much. Good how do people get in touch with you? Like, What's your um, social media? So our pain to power mm. um, that's it for all of our social media, Instagram, yeah. Twitter, LinkedIn. Oh, you've everyone. got the t-shirt. I see you wearing yes. the brand as well. Yeah. Right now, our mate. Our power, yeah. Mm. Our paint to power. Mm. Um, yeah. Did, well, you did bring a couple of t-shirts with you now. Do you know what? I only have one, you know. What size yeah. is it? What size? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm, I'm, laughs> that would decide. I'm a bit bigger than <laughs> what size is it. But Gideon, really thank you for coming down. Appreciate thank it. You heard it there. Paint to power. If you want to get in touch with Gideon as well, please do. Thank, um, you, thank you very much, Rory. I enjoyed that one. Thank right. you very much. Huge. As well. Um, as always, thank you so much for listening to the Men's Room podcast. Again, like myself, I will keep repeating this. If you prefer to watch the podcast, which I like to do, go over to TalkSports YouTube channel where you can watch all the latest Men's Room podcasts. From myself, Gideon and Rory, to the next one.